Hello and welcome to another episode of Pitch Cafe, a place where talent meets coffee. This was a concept which we started to enable startup founders and youth entrepreneurs with all sorts of resources. Our very first show, Pitch Cafe, roasted, toasted, and boosted youth entrepreneurs who were winners of international hackathons, and we gently nudged them on concepts related to startup founding, whether or not they were ready to start up. But Pitch Cafe has come a long way after that. We have brought in amazing guests. We've gotten investors, serial entrepreneurs, founders, entrepreneurs, teachers, professors, and philanthropists. The list goes on, and we are going to bring more exciting people here. But what has also started off with the Pitch Cafe show and podcast is the Pitch Cafe Academy, where we have started distilling concepts related to startups. related to career and related to personality development through these amazing episodes so in today's episodes i'm going to address a really really hot topic that is how to raise startup funding if you're a startup founder or if maybe you're a student who's sitting and thinking about an idea and you want to get to a point where you can raise funding listen to this episode all the way to the end very carefully also if you like this whole concept of pitch cafe and all the products and services you are enjoying please hit the like and subscribe button and also share it with your network uh, this episode is free but a lot of valuable information is being delivered in this episode so that is uh, one small gesture of appreciation i request from all of you with that let's get started with the burning problem of today's youth whether it's in india or in us or any other part of the world how to raise startup funding you know if you're a startup founder and you're looking at the photographs of founders of airbnb or uber or google or facebook what were those people like when they were in a garage building their very first code what was steve jobs like when he and wozniak fabricated their first breadboard into a motherboard so how did they go raise funding right this is like an the most amazing journey for any startup founder winning your first customer raising your first round of funding nowadays people bootstrap as long as they can because they are in control of all their metrics but at some point you will achieve scale you will have a huge customer base and you will reach a point where you will not be able to manage your day to day operations with just the kind of resources you're having and with the people you know and you're comfortable with you'll have to come out of your comfort zone and you'll have to aim at the moon you'll have to aim at your next milestone and to drive this next level of growth which is going to be much higher than what you're used to you will have to raise funding so raising funding for a startup is probably the most crucial point for any startup founder it's a make or break for many startup I mean, whether it's in silicon valley or outside so how do you raise startup funding is a question you need to think about all the time if you are the founder or the ceo it's like your second job you're always meeting and networking people you're always selling your idea you're always raising money so if you're a startup founder you should know that you'll have to be repeating your startup pitch like a million times gazillion in times you know starting with your friends and family who are you meet you will be repeating these concepts and you will be thinking about raising money so with that being said what are some of the concepts you need to be really familiar with when you're raising startup funding paraphrasing that what do vcs or investors look for if they are funding your startup so the very first thing any investor will look for when they are funding your startup is what kind of startup idea have you decided to go with and what is the size of the market you know if you have picked an idea which is outdated or maybe it's already being done by several people and that market is very crowded then you're one among many they call it the red ocean the investor may not be so interested unless you have something really promising which is very very unique so your product has to probably tap into the latest trends or the trends which are going to come in the next 5 to 10 years so you have to think ahead they say you know think about where the puck is going to go rather than where the puck is this is like an ice hockey term so where will this puck go you know i'm going to go stand there before it goes there so 
that's the quote used by Scott Kresge. It's very popular here in Silicon Valley from where I'm recording this tutorial. And here, a lot of investors use that in their slide decks. So that's the reason I brought it up. And uh, I was fortunate enough to attend a Founders Masterclass here with a veteran Silicon Valley investor. His name is Deev Jagadish at the Falcon X B2B uh, incubator and accelerator here uh, in Milpitas in Silicon Valley. And there they you know, discuss these concepts in a lot of detail. And I did meet many founders where I saw them getting funded and these were the criteria they were satisfying. Firstly, the idea they were working on was about a technology or a trend which is going to you know, show up in some time. It's not outdated or it's not out there yet. For example, creating an augmented reality or metaverse platform. You know, I saw a founder who was doing that. And that's kind of like a trend which will come up strongly in the next five years, but it's not yet there. So that's the first thing and the market is large. You know, it's really huge market. So your market size uh, for the startup you're building should be large, very, very large. In, in fact, should be in billion dollars or trillion dollar market size projections. So that's the first thing, uh, you know, an investor looks for when they're funding a startup. The second thing they look for is whether or not you are a good entrepreneur to work with. For example, let's say you have a pedigree from a not so great school. Let's say you didn't score very well in your college and your college is not rated very well. In that case, have you partnered with somebody who's got great academic credentials? Is your advisor from a top league school or are you working with people who have 20 plus years of experience in the domain and you have achieved a lot? Maybe you have got several patents or you're holding really key positions in all the startups or companies you've worked until then. So all these, uh, you know, credentials, they bring some sort of accountability to the entrepreneur. Nowadays, uh, they usually prefer a product centric founder, you know, who can a founder or at least one person who's very product centric. If you have multiple founders or, you know, your team has multiple people, when you just start up, you're like few people uh, who, you know, um, come into the startup, let's say five people, at least one of them has to have this very strong product centric background. And one person at least should be able to sell, sell the idea. A lot of uh, founders are introverts, so they bring in someone who can talk and sell and gel with people, bring in connections, you know, um, uh, you know, pitch the idea very effectively. So the nature of the founder or the entrepreneur is very important when an investor is working uh, or deciding to fund them. So, so one aspect is the qualification. You know, have you spent 20 years in this area and you know everything about it? Or have you come from a college in the research lab where you worked on this really cool idea which is coming after 10 years and you know everything about it already? For example, uh, AI was uh, cutting edge 10 years ago and not many people were working on it. Now it's like, uh, you know, bread and butter for most startups. You need to have that AI component or a cloud component, whatever that is. So uh, this is one facet. Another facet is how good a person you are. Uh, are you going to oppose everything your team is going to tell you? Are you not going to be uh, able to listen to people? Are you very strong on your views? You know, what kind of uh, personality do you have? Do you listen to people? Uh, do you look at the market trends and are able to shift your idea? You know, it's, it's amazing if you look at the story of Twitter or Pinterest, what kind of companies they were when they started. They were selling audio podcasts. You know, they were podcast platforms. Today, they've become social media platforms. It's really interesting how these founders pivot. And they pivot because they were listening to the customers. They were listening to the market. They were listening to the investors. And they made the bold move of moving away from their pet idea and building something very different, which the market wanted. Or the market changed because of a lot of circumstances. You don't know these things. Nobody knew COVID was going to hit and how it was going to accelerate these uh, chat platforms, these social media platforms. Nobody saw that coming. You know, now it has fueled this whole augmented reality and virtual reality uh, companies. They were struggling before COVID and now suddenly they are out there. You know, Zoom, the stocks hit, they skyrocketed the, you know, the chat platform and they did very well. So. You never know, a lot of things are not under your control. So the startup idea you 
start working with it's going to go through lots of ebbs and flows are you a founder who was able to move with the ebb and flow you know creating something is very different every every other person i meet is very creative they come up with so many ideas do you have it in you to move with the market and create something which is scalable which people are willing to pay so this is a trait which venture capitalists look for i remember you know one of my favorite investors here in silicon valley he was talking at one of these conferences he said there is this really hot shot uh, cloud company uh, and the founder he's he's you know rolled out multiple unicorns now and uh, i follow his work as well uh, not to name him right now but what he said was when that cloud company's founder came to this investor they just had a slide deck and the idea on the slide deck never saw the light of the day but what he liked was how promising this founder was and how stubborn he was and how adaptable he was and he was really listening so this is a trait which the investors call as coachability so i've listened to these pitches you know from really top league schools and i see the investors coaching the founders in some of these get togethers you know alumni networks i go there and listen and i'm seeing the founders are not listening to the advice from the investors if you're not coachable nobody can help you so coachability you know ability to work with being a good team player these are all really very important when you get funded and not uh, when you are you know bootstrapping by yourself you think okay i don't need anyone but imagine a company like byju's or imagine a company like paytm they they are at such massive scale the founder is no longer close to the idea he started with it has evolved into a totally different animal in that situation you will have to listen you will have to work with people who don't think like you you will have to adapt and scale to the needs of the market so these are the three most important things which venture capitalists look for when they are funding someone so with that i'd like to wrap up this first episode of what do investors or venture capitalists look for when they are funding a startup there are a lot more aspects i would like to talk about like the asp the gross margin the rule of 40 uh, the valuation of a company the return on investment many such concepts which are slightly more technical so i will visit you in the next episode and we can talk all about those concepts until then if you benefited by listening to this episode please hit the subscribe button like this video and share it with your network i'll truly appreciate this gesture and i will see you in the next episode until then wishing you a lot of scale and success this is your host meera patel and i'll see you in the next episode thank you